Hi lads and lasses, Modest Pelican here with Thick Man. If you enjoyed this video, please start a charity that's sole purpose is to raise money to put small military helmets and goggles on wild pelicans, as this would really help spread the good word of my channel. Today we are being sent to the exotic Maldives to infiltrate a criminal resort known as Haven Island. Basically they help the world's most notorious criminals change their identities and disappear off the grid. They also allegedly help fathers disappear, so if your dad went to the store and never came back, he probably hired these guys. Our targets today are the founder of Haven Island, Tyson Williams, who obviously hasn't heard of Clearacel, his business partner, Lyudmila Vitrova, who's wearing so much fake tan she's officially a racial minority, and Stephen Bradley, who's their genius computer programmer and also apparently a fashion connoisseur. We'll bring with us the iconic silver baller pistol for nostalgia, a smartphone so we can send tactical and strategic dick pics if and when required, and of course a briefcase with an RS-15 assault rifle in it because this video is proudly sponsored by the NRA. Well not officially sponsored, but please just send me some money NRA, I heard you guys have a lot. So this map is clearly gorgeous, and I'm glad to see Agent 47 dressed up like a private schoolboy who frequently says the phrase, my dad is a lawyer. Look how angry he is too. Everyone asks who is Hitman, but not how is Hitman. The agency set up a cover story for us, so we might as well check into the resort under our fake identity, Tobias. I head towards the reception, and one of my targets, Lyudmila, strolls past, but obviously I can't make a play here, as I want to remain undercover for as long as possible. As I approach the desk, I am greeted by a staff member, but they don't bow for me, which is frankly pretty rude. In some of the other tourist destinations I visited in this game, the slaves, sorry staff, actually bowed for me, but don't worry, I'll take the high road and just leave a passive aggressive review about her on TripAdvisor. That's actually what someone called Tobias would probably do. I take my keys and now it's time to case this joint out a bit. They've got a nice pool facility and it's important I stay incognito, so I walk through the pool with my boat shoes on, just like a normal person would. The island's got a lot of security guards who aren't afraid to work out in fitted dress shirts, geez I hope they don't split a seam. It's also got gym facilities in case I feel like snorting creatine later, a crossfit room in case I feel like snorting estrogen later, and yeah, basically all the normal things you'd find around a resort. I feel like I'm being a tour guide right now, maybe I should switch professions, but for now, let's just go to our villa. I find it easily, no need to clap. And it's really nice. A big TV, ocean views, and wow, two face masks on the bed. Are they really going to rub in that Agent 47 is single? Damn, that's cold. There's also a note on my bed that says, call me, which could mean anything, but let's play it safe and assume it's a booty call, so maybe we'll need that second face mask after all. I steal a juicy Granny Smith apple, as it's a great source of fiber and various vitamins, and then proceed to change in to generic middle-aged white guy tourist attire. Not going to lie, this has to be one of the coolest maps I've played in any game. I almost just want to relax and not kill anyone. But no, we will obviously kill people. I continue exploring and it's mostly just criminals relaxing everywhere. Like this sweet old lady who is meditating on the beach and like damn, she's super good at it. Absolutely nothing breaks her concentration. I wonder what sort of criminal she is. If I had to guess, I'd say sex offender. The guard then says to me, Looking good today, sir. Honestly, thank you, mate. I really needed that confidence boost and I think I can now assassinate your bosses with a can-do attitude. I locate the private mansion, which if my memory serves me correct, which it often doesn't, is where we should be able to find CEO Tyson Williams. It's a pretty secure building. There's some guy throwing snags on the barbie. Haha, <laughs> that's funny because I'm Australian and we say that dozens of times a day. As stylish as this Vogue Hawaiian shirt is, we'll need a disguise to properly explore as there's just guards everywhere. I do knock a maid out and try to clear a route in, but it doesn't really work out. I also don't think it's very politically correct that Agent 47 can't wear her naughty little maid disguise and dust the architraves, but whatever, we'll come back later. On my way out, I spot a doctor leaving the premises, which could be my ticket inside. I follow him back to his villa where he is relaxing on the deck with his secretary. I overhear her phone conversation and realize that they are in fact sleeping together which puts me in a real ethical dilemma. Do I tell the wife and get involved in that sticky mess, or do I simply kill them all? I decide to take a calculated risk and sneak inside their villa. 
He has a briefcase too, which I respect the hell out of, and it's honestly going to make eliminating him a bit more emotionally taxing, as I feel like we are sort of briefcase bros. There's a trap door in his bathroom, so I remove the safety pin and discover that it drops down to the ocean. I formulate a cunning plan, which involves using my briefcase as bait because I now know that he loves them, and then flooding the sink. I watch on from the safety of some chest as the doctor falls through the trap door. Epic prank complete. The staff member then enters and reasonably panics and I'm forced to elbow her in the face which is pretty mean. But not nearly as mean as what I have to do next as we can't leave any witnesses, please say hi to my cat for me. So yeah, either the doctor is extremely good at holding his breath or he has, well, drowned. But hey, at least his wife back home doesn't have to be with a cheater anymore because he's dead. I hide the bodies, change into the doctor's outfit which is quite moist and head back to the villa to make that booty call. I know we've got a job to do, but isn't Agent 47's happiness also important? I call the number and it turns out to be my target Ludmilla who wants to meet me for lunch. As in me, Tobias, my fake identity. You know your love life isn't looking good when your fake identity gets more action than you do. We'll get lunch with her after we do this whole doctor thing. I arrive at the mansion and it's time to locate Tyson Williams. Now it's important when doing any mission to perform effective and concise reconnaissance. Being thorough is the key to success. I find this dude on the diving board and I can't tell you how much I want to just push him into the ocean. There's even stingrays down there, it would really be an epic prank. So I do just kick him into the water below and everyone sees and I start getting shot and have to reload. A 1000 IQ play. I catch back up to where I was and then enter the building and look at this guy reading. What a nerd, who reads books? There's nothing you can learn from reading books that playing iPhone games and smoking weed won't teach you faster. I find Tyson upstairs and he's really sick, like he's coughing a lot and mate, I think if you just put some pants on, we can all have a better time during this assassination attempt. I follow him around and he does weird activities like watching this arty movie which is honestly really bad, it has terrible character development. It's all about this one circle that morphs, like just watch porn like a normal person. Still, this would probably get 99% on Rotten Tomatoes, let's be honest. I overflow a tap to draw in his his private guard, which proves that not only can water keep you hydrated, but it can assist you with your job. I also take out the guy who was guarding the film room, and I've got to say the briefcase is not only classy, but also versatile. Tyson eventually comes back in, looking like that uncle everyone has, but no one wants to be left alone with. I decide to take him down a little bit poetically, so I toss an apple because an apple a day keeps the doctor away. Except in this case, where the doctor stays. Man, I'd be a really terrible poet. But anyway, I strangle him with a stethoscope I stole earlier and we take down our first target. It's now time to eliminate Ludmilla. What about that spelling? Such an annoying name. I want to call her L. Judd Miller. Even if she wasn't a target, I'd kill her just for having a name that's hard to pronounce. I change back into my private schoolboy attire and head towards the restaurant because I've got a hot lunch date and maybe, just maybe, Agent 47 slash Tobias is about to lose his virginity. I arrive at the restaurant and there's no sign of Miss L. Judd Miller anywhere. I guess I was pretty damn late, probably should have had the lunch date first, but just like post-marital sex, Agent 47 is worth waiting for. I find her down on the boardwalks, but she gives me the cold shoulder and acts like I don't even exist. One might say I misplayed my cards here, but not to worry, we'll just creepily follow her around for a while until the right moment presents itself for us to get down on one knee and tip our imaginary fedora while saying, apologies lady." I mean the right moment to kill her. The chefs are in the process of designing a new menu for the restaurant and Milady is trying the new experimental meals which presents the perfect opportunity to poison her. Unfortunately I don't have any poison on me because we brought an iPhone and a goddamn assault rifle instead. She also hits up the day spa as part of her routine. 
she actually closes the whole parlor when she goes in, which is kind of selfish to be honest, as I am one, unable to get a long overdue massage, and two, go inside to kill her because the bloody receptionist keeps getting angry at me. I proceed to steal another juicy Granny Smith apple as a form of silent protest. It looks like poisoning the food is the right play here, so firstly I take down a lonely waiter while he fetches fresh stock so that I can hypothetically access the kitchen. While looking for some poison, I notice Stephen Bradley is hitting the gym. Way to move up in the world. You went from nerdy hacker, which is actually probably quite cool and relevant in today's society, to annoying douchebag who won't shut the fuck up about his paleo diet. A storm begins rolling in, so rest in peace after work tanning session, it looks like I'm destined to be a pasty white bald guy for the rest of my life. I overhear these two guys arguing about a gas leak, so I grab the conveniently placed wrench, and then when no one is looking, I loosen the valve. You might be thinking, hey, I wonder what his plan is here, but in reality, I'm completely winging it, as personally, I find it's best not to overthink decisions. Moments later, one of the waiters flicks his cigarette into the gas leak and dies in a fiery explosion. Boy oh boy, my face is red, that one's on me. With the island security now on full alert, I decide to try and find some poison and continue with plan A. Or is it plan B? I don't even know anymore. The storm is getting close, but sometimes you've got to be thankful for the small things in life as I manage to catch a poisonous frog. Excited, I run back to the kitchen, but upon my arrival, I realize that the gas explosion did not only happen downstairs, but in fact, it seems I exploded the entire kitchen. That would have actually been a cool way to eliminate Milady L. Judd Miller had she been in the kitchen at the time which she was not. So now there's no after work tanning session or an after work schnitzel, how could this day get any worse? It looks like we'll have to ambush her at the day spa to give her an unforgettable, very special happy ending. Haha, <laughs> handjob innuendo joke. Also, she might not even consciously realize that I've snapped her neck during the massage, making it impossible to be unforgettable, but you know what I mean. I enter the spa and there's staff and clients everywhere, so I'll have to move with caution and stealth. I patiently wait for Ludmilla to arrive in a chair and I've got to say, 47, you have awful posture, mate. Do you really want to go through life with back pain? Think. My main girl eventually arrives looking like a snack, but doesn't seem too interested in my services, which is incredibly awkward, as I really did have all my eggs in the snap neck during massage basket. These are the moments that separate the good assassins from the great assassins. Sometimes you've got to dig deep. You've got to stand tall. You've got to try harder than the white guys do in the NBA. And so I pull out my fortunately silenced assault rifle and just start doing work. If it makes you feel better, the staff here massaged terrorists and criminals. Like seriously, suicide bombers would be nothing without their masseuses. Imagine if you were running along, ready to blow yourself up, and suddenly you strained your back and fell to the ground. I'm telling you, day spas are the real Al-Qaeda. Anyway, Lyudmila is eliminated, meaning there is only one dodgy malacca left. By some miracle, and probably also because of the storm and silencer, no one noticed all the shooting. Not even the power tripping receptionist. I consider cleaning up the bodies, but then realize I can't be bothered, and so instead put back on my waiter disguise and head towards Stephen Bradley. He seems to be residing on a private island, roughly the size of Australia. For some reason, waiters are allowed on the island, which is a bit of a fluke, or perhaps Perhaps subconscious genius, who knows. Steven then sprints past me. Geez, the man clearly values his cardiovascular health. What a knob. No, I'm joking. I should probably jog in real life, but why jog when you can play a video game where you can kill someone who jogs instead? Same, same, but different. I take another calculated risk and try to shoot some of the seagulls out of the sky as seagulls are just the poor man's pelican, but then realize this is probably not worth blowing my cover for. I head up into Steven's village and subdue the chef so I can seamlessly take his place. I then place the missing propane tank into the barbecue and finally use my wrench to start a gas leak that is barely noticeable to the naked eye. While waiting for Steven to come back, I cruise around the resort to test out some thumbnail concepts. I predict that some will work better than others. Eventually he comes back, but rather than starting the barbecue, he lounges around, which is not ideal for our epic prank. 
Reflecting upon the traps I've set for this mission, I'd rate myself a solid needs improvement. The iPhone I've been carrying around all day does actually have a flashbang function and I feel it's high time I used it. I toss the phone and when the security guard picks it up, he is greeted with a blinding flash and so am I. Calculated. I then shoot the barbecue, but the blast radius is too small to damage anyone at all. Calculated. With no other option, I simply shoot Steven and his private security guard with my silver bowler to complete the contract. Was this the smoothest mission? Honestly, it never is. But Agent 47 will still sleep comfortably tonight as all the quote, innocent people were either feeding, cleaning up for, or massaging criminals, making them filthy terrorists, ignorant or otherwise. Wow, a zero star rating can't be mad though. That's probably one of my favorite missions of all time in any game ever. Thanks for watching you legends and a massive thanks to my patrons for supporting the channel. Until next time and as always, stay classy.